I cast all my care upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And when I don't know what to do, I will just give it all to you, Lord. I will give every situation that I cannot I don't know what to do with this situation. Are you in crisis today? Well, this message is for you. This message is for me. Hallelujah. I give the Lord all the praise. Because when we don't know, what we're going to do? We're going to cast everything over on the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching and viewing and being with me today. And for your prayers and your support, your comments. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon every single one of us this day. In the name of Jesus, we receive your power. We receive your strength. We receive your fire. In Jesus' mighty name, I say, come Holy Spirit and give to the people everything that they need this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, what is a crisis? And the title of this message today is Strategies for Crisis. What is a crisis? It is an intense difficulty. It's, it's trouble. It's a danger. You know, the military have a phrase when situations come up that are a crisis situation, and they, they say, work the problem. Work the problem. But you know what we can do with this problem? Any problem that you might have with family, with finances, with uh, physical issues, with mental issues, do you know what you can do? You can turn those problems into opportunities. Hallelujah. You know, and Sister Rebecca uh, Wheeler, a um, good friend of mine and minister that we worked together for over 40 years, that this is, this is a, a, a thought that, that she has had for years and years, and that you turn every problem into an opportunity. What? An opportunity for God to move on your behalf. An opportunity for the Spirit of the Lord to come in and bring resolution and to bring victory to you in Jesus' name. You know, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verses 8 through 10 say, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Hallelujah. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our bodies. Hallelujah. And so what is this saying? We're going to turn everything around. And I'm going to give you some strategies today, some spiritual strategies that will help you to overcome in every situation and be victorious. Hallelujah. You know, there is lots of crisis situation, situations that are going on out there in, in the body of Christ. But God is greater. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. You know, it says here in, in 2 Corinthians 10, 13, We, however, will not boast beyond proper limits, but we'll confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us, a sphere that also includes you. Hallelujah. We're, we're going to boast in the Lord. We're going to say God is able to do exceeding above what we even ask or think in this crisis situation. He's able to do. He's able to heal our bodies. He's able to provide and be our provider in any type of financial issue. He is our, our peacemaker that we can 
uh, mend those relationships and, and bring communication uh, into the picture. Can you say amen? Well, we're going to definitely work the problem. And there are three strategies I want you to remember today. That is repent, rethink, and reform. Is the three R's. Hallelujah. If you've got a situation in your life, these three strategies will help you to be the winner, the, the victor. Hallelujah. It says, let's start with, with the first one, and that is repent. You know, repentance is a gift from God. And it, what, what does it do when we repent? It cleanses and gets rid of any hindrances that would try to stop our victory from coming. In Acts 3.19, it brings on the refreshing. It says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when we find ourselves in a crisis situation, in a difficult spot, then we open ourselves up to the Lord by repenting. You know, Jonah did that. He found himself in a crisis situation by being thrown overboard, by being swallowed by the, the giant fish, and all of a sudden he finds himself in the belly of that fish. You know, he, he, he begins to, to repent. He says, I'm going to keep my vow. I'm going to pay my vow, and I am going to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't thank the Lord for the crisis, because the crisis didn't come from the Lord. But what do we thank him for? We thank him for deliverance. We thank him for giving us a, a strategy and a plan uh, to overcome the enemy. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. In Second Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Now, some of you need to take hold of that right there, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Hallelujah. See, repentance is saying, here, Lord, I'm giving everything to you, Lord. Oh, anything I've done wrong, you know, anything that's not of faith is sin. And so if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't need to repent. I've not done anything wrong. Well, let me ask you this. Have you done everything by faith? Every person you've talked to, every place you've went, everything you've put in your body, uh, has it been by faith? And so I believe that all of us can and can repent. All of us can bring everything to the Lord and just pour it out there at his feet. Can you say amen? He doesn't want any to perish, but he wants them to come to repentance. Why? Because that's step number one in the plan of the strategy to overcome any crisis. Second Timothy 2.25 Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of the truth. Remember I said that repentance cleanses and makes your heart pure. It also removes any hindrances so that you can hear from the Spirit of God. Some of you have been having stress. Some of you have been having headaches. Some of you have been having other physical issues, not being able to sleep at night. Let me tell you something. Number one on the list is repentance. Hallelujah. That will start the process to bring you out of any type of crisis. Any type of indecision, any type of financial issue, any type of in stress or pressure. You know, Jesus has made a way 
of escape for you. Repent, rethink, and reform. That's your way of escape. That's the way to work the problem and turn it into an opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, let us hear. Let us hear what you're saying to us today in Jesus' name. For the Father would say to us right now, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am on the move. Be still and know that I work great miracles for you. Uh, be still and know that I am the God uh, that... that makes you prosper. Uh, be still and know that I am the one that's greater than your enemy. And I have sent forth my angels uh, to, to minister to you. Be still and know uh, that there is nothing uh, that, 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 oh, that, 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 that can come to you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, saith the Lord in Jesus' name. I receive that word. I receive that word, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Romans 2, 4, it says, Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's goodness leads to repentance? When you begin to remember how good God is and how good he's been to you, he forgave your sins. He took stripes upon his back to bring healing to you. He, he had a spear stuck in his side that, that he made an entrance for us to be able to communicate with the Heavenly Father. <coughs> Repent. Have a repentant heart. In Jesus' name. The second part in the strategy to overcome crisis is to rethink. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hallelujah. And so we surrender. Everybody say, I surrender. I surrender to the Lord right now in Jesus' name. I surrender my spirit, my soul, my body, my mind, Oh, hallelujah, I surrender my finances, I surrender my family, I surrender the ministry, I surrender, Lord. Hallelujah, I present my body a living sacrifice unto you. Praise God. And I'm not going to think anymore like the world thinks. The world wants you to medicate. That's what the world wants you to do. And the devil wants to dictate to you. Oh, hallelujah. But you know what? God liberates you. He liberates you. But see, the world, the world out there wants you to go its route. But if you really want to take care of this strategy, this crisis in your life, you'll go God's way. You'll do it the way God does it. You'll think the way God thinks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments and every pretentious pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. So what are you thinking today? How are you thinking when a crisis situation comes up? Oh, hallelujah. Do you say, oh, I'm going to work this problem and I'm going to turn it in to an opportunity. How do you do that? Number one, you repent. Number two, you rethink the situation. 
And when I say rethink, is that you get your thoughts in line with what God is thinking. Philippians 4, 8. This is what God is thinking. Finally, brethren and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy or virtuous, think on these things. Hallelujah. I'm going to think about what God has done for me. I'm going to think about God moving on my behalf. You know, it says that his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth seeking somebody that he can be, he can work on their behalf. He can do good on their behalf. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, stop right here. Stop right here. Let your face be upon me. Hallelujah. Let your face be upon those uh, that are viewing this video today. In the name of Jesus, stop at their house, Lord. Stop and put your face upon them. In the name of Jesus, shine down upon them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us think like God thinks. We're going to repent. We're going to rethink things. Just, we're going to take a step back and we're going to say, okay, I see what the enemy's trying to do. Now I want to see what God is doing. I want to see him. I want to see the movement of the Holy Spirit in my life, in my family, in, in the body of Christ. I want to see God move. With his mighty hand. Hallelujah. It says that his arm is not short. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for touching us today. He's touching several people right now in Jesus' name. He's clearing out your mind. Your mind has been cloudy. Your mind has been thinking on other things. Your mind has been saying, how can I correct this? How can I get this done? Uh, where's the money going to come from? Where are the people going to come from? Oh, help me, Lord. Hallelujah. And then you can't sleep at night. Let me tell you something. Repent. Rethink. Begin to think the way God thinks. Hallelujah. God always thinks victory. He never, he never thinks defeat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last one that we want to talk about today, and I'm glad we're having this little talk. I think it's important. The last two weeks, our phone has rung and rung, and people have been in crisis situations. But praise God, he's liberating today. He's delivering today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Some of you have been thinking too much about yourself and not enough about the Lord. Oh, just catch hold of that. Catch hold of that. The third part or the third strategy that will help you to overcome crisis is reform. Now, what does reform do? Well, you've got a form out here. And what are you going to do? You're going to change it. You're going to change things. That's what reform means. Hallelujah. You're going to bring a change into your situation. Second Corinthians 3.18 All we with who unveiled faces contemplate God's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So we are being changed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Work the problem into an opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, I thank you that you are bringing every crisis situation into an opportunity where you can move and manifest yourself. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10.35 So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Some of you have done away with confidence in the Lord. 
Remember, he is the God who made heaven and earth. He is the God that moves and wars for you and fights for you. He is Jehovah Nisi, the God that goes ahead of you into battle. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides for you. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals you. Can you say amen? Do you know who you can have confidence in? And you can have confidence in the Father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I think about Philippians 4, 6, where it says, be not, don't be anxious about anything. You know, anxiety is caused from fear. The root of anxiety is the enemy brings fear that you're not going to be in control and that you're not going to be able to handle any problem. But praise God, after this message today, you are delivered from anxiety attacks. You are delivered uh, from any type of, of anxiousness. It says, do not be anxious for anything, but what? But in every situation, whoo, in every crisis, hallelujah, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your situation to the Lord. Hallelujah. And remember, we're going to repent, we're going to rethink, and we're going to reform. We're going to change things. Hallelujah. Are you up for change? Are you up for change in your body? Are you up for change in your spiritual life? Are you up for change uh, in your family situation? Are you up for change in your mental stability? Ooh, hallelujah! I speak over you today that you have a sound mind. You have not been given a spirit of fear, but you've been given a sound mind, power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. You know, I think about what changes things in our life. And one thing that came to me early this morning, about 5 o'clock this morning, was the word forgiveness. That changes things. That changes relationships. That changes hearts. Uh, that changes the movement of the of the Spirit, it changes everything. You know, in John chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, this is about the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in the very act of adultery. They made her stand before the group and, and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. What are you going to do about it? You know. And this woman was standing there. She was in a crisis situation. She was about to be stoned. Because that was the law. That was the Moses law. That was given. If any woman was caught in adultery. That she was to be stoned to death. She was facing a crisis situation. But you know, Jesus was there. Hallelujah. Jesus is manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. What do you need him to destroy today? Praise God. He will show up and he will destroy the works of the devil. And so there he was with this woman. And he reaches down and he writes something in the, in the sand. And then he says to the group, Anyone without sin cast the first stone. And it says from the elder to the younger, one by one, they began to leave. The men began to leave. 
And Jesus looks at the woman and he says to her, go your way and sin no more. Forgiveness was manifested on that day, in that situation, in that crisis situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in some of your crisis situation, you may find yourself forgiving someone else. Praise God. And see, that's what you receive when you repent. You receive God's forgiveness and you receive his righteousness back into your life. Hallelujah. But that word forgiveness was so strong in, in, my, in my spirit man uh, this morning that she, that woman that was charged with adultery was forgiven. And Jesus said, go and sin no more. And the Lord is saying to you today, bring every care and burden to me. Lay it down at my feet. And when you don't know what to do, I'm going to show you what to do. Repent, rethink, and reform. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this message. We thank you for empowering us today with your word. I thank you, Lord, that we have the power to overcome, that we overcome by your blood, by the word of our testimony, and we we don't care about our lives until the death. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors. And I thank you, Lord, that any crisis situation, we're going to work the problem and we're going to turn it into an opportunity. Hallelujah. For you to be glorified. For you to get the praise and the honor and the glory. Oh, can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for deliverance today. I thank you for deliverance from anxiety. I thank you for deliverance uh, for any type of pride, any type of, of anger, any type of sickness or disease. Lord, that you are manifesting yourself in the lives of the people. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for his word today. In Jesus' precious name, hallelujah, I thank you for viewing.